Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon or good evening. Hi, I'm trichologist Lisa Eckbeer. And as you saw, I was taking a little bit of sip of my coffee. Well, I am excited, super, super excited about today's show. Uh, before we talk about what we're going to do on the show, you know, I work with my hair just to show you guys how lovely and how wonderful our natural hair is. Now, I did something a little different. So I really don't know how my hair is going to turn out, but I'm excited about it because the beautiful thing is that our hair is wonderfully flexible. It's wonderfully versatile. <laughs> it's all those things and more. We just don't think about it. Okay. So I um, twisted my hair last night in my um, hair vitamins. And yesterday I really super hydrated my hair and I had some definition. But our product is so clean. The product I make is so clean that it'll dissipate or it will go into the hair. I mean, it's just great. Well, so what I did, I um, super hydrated it. So you can see some of it has gone into the hair. And I still, and I like a little bit of frizz. So you guys know that because I like a frizzy fro. I'm kind of old school when it comes to that young, but I'm old school. <laughs> I like a frizzy fro. But um, so I, and I've got me in the scrunchie and I used my um, long headband scrunchie. You know, this is one of my, you know how you have those um, old pajamas or old, a uh, house coat or robe or dress or or whatever and they are they've been around a while this is mine that's been around a while it's got all the little ribbons trying to pull away but i love it love it love it nevertheless it's even got a little bit of my hair in there but that's not because it pulled it away it's just because i you know it just got into the hair, some of the hair that was shedding. So anyways, I used that. And because it's older, I kind of made it out of a scrunchie. It's nice nylon. You know, I like to use the ones that have the little holes so you can get the air hole there. And and But it's going to be a great show. I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff. But I want to show you my hair first. Okay. So I'm going to take down the hair. I took the scrunchie. And you can see it's going to have a little more definition because, well, actually, I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm going to do the same thing I always do. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to slide through the hair. And I'm going to just kind of break up the curls a little bit. But if I get to a kink, I just take my finger and thumb so that I'll be able to slide straight through without pulling my hair out. Okay. And then I'm going to take the opposite side. So these curls are a little, were a little tight, but they were really defined. And I'm going to take and do the same thing with the front end in the kind of what I call the French lace. And that's where you just separate it. You're not teasing it. You're just kind of separating it. Your fingers through because if you get to a tangle, you need to take come out and do your fingers and thumb. And then the back, because you know it was up in a scrunchie. And I'm going to just kind of work through and just kind of fluff the back and do the same thing as you can see my microphone is kind of in my way and i'm doing the opposite side again and fluff and pulling going in and kind of pulling the back down but not yanking but just feeling for it just to make sure it doesn't have any um any tangles because that's when you start creating those tears all right, and I'm just going to fluff my fro out. And you can see it has a lot more definition today. It's not as frizzy, which is what I normally have. Like, yeah, when I turn to the side a little bit, then you can see how how it is. Because I've got to get creative as it gets longer. I've got to start um, opening it up in the middle or on the side or someplace because it's, it's just too too long to stand up in the fro so you'll see me doing a little bit of that but i still like that old school 70s thing they used to do and with that hairline flipped up if you remember some of those pictures if you go back and look if you weren't you're too young to be around that time you can look at some of the pictures of some of the folks and they had that little thing that pump a door up in the top or something it was pretty cool and then I'm going to fluff back here and I'm done. Okay. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. If you're just tuning in for the 
very first time. I'm trichologist Lisa Eckberry. You're here, doctor, and I know if you're on YouTube or Facebook or some other media where you can see me, then I know that you saw me what I did with my hair and see how easy it was. And it's got muscle body and definition. But if you're on the radio or if you're tuning in some other forum where you can just hear me, then you will not be able to you'll not be able to to see my me but you can go to my youtube page it's, everything is always archived and you'll always be able to see me well i'm lisa Ackberry. you're here doctor for the next hour and we're going to talk about hair i've got some really exciting things to talk about i'm here each and every week right here in the wdi studios and of course as you know iheart radio and you can always download that iHeart app, and you can view me anywhere in the world, especially if you're tuning in on my show and on my YouTube page, because on YouTube, then I have the opportunity. I'm so excited about that. I have the opportunity also to get to anyone in around the world. So we have some uh, we have some exciting stuff. Let me make sure I mute that out. There we go. We have some exciting um, things to talk about today. My chat room is open, so you're welcome to chat with me. Just go to my YouTube page if you like to chat and, and have a conversation with me. So today, I'm going to talk about several things. So let me get to my list, because I made a list, because it was just super, super I put my sunglasses hello up there today to, for you guys. Hello. <laughs> so, um, and I always like to put uh, some emoji of some sort up so that I can, and I, I need to give, blow you guys a kiss also. These are for my folks out there on um, YouTube that I chat with. So, um, and I love, I love emojis. Everyone will tell you I love emojis and that's just it. I just love them. Okay, but let's talk about... Um, what we're going to talk about today as we talk about hair. My uh, chat room is open and you can chat with me and ask any questions. You can always email me, lisa at lisaackberry.com or you can call my institute if you ever, ever, ever. Yeah, well, that's lisa at lisaackberry.com. Yes. If you ever need to call for a hair and scalp analysis or if you want to call and visit one of our salons or know more about our hair products, you can call 901-380-4445, or again, you can email me, lisa at lisa at Welcome to the show. Everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in today. It is a beautiful day, and this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice in be glad in it. So I'm super excited. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. I've got a great show. And that's what I want to start out with saying. I'm going to talk about a 16-year-old black student with natural hair that was asked by the school to leave and go get her hair done. Wow. You know, I thought we were over that. I'm going to also talk about something, and this is a question for a lot of folks. Can black people have oily scalp? Hmm, someone seems to believe that black people have an oily scalp. We're going to talk about that today. And how are we going to definitely keep these dandruff in check? And what is dandruff? How do we know that everything that's flaking is dandruff? Are all flakes equal? equal. Mm, very interesting. And we're going to talk about a couple of other things that um, we've got some celebrity news. Laputa Yanga, <laughs> and you know I just butchered that, of what happened when she was on the red carpet with her hair art. Oh my goodness. She had a hairstyle. She's, you know, she rocks this short shaved look, but there's a lot to Laputa that a lot of people don't talk about much. She is a superstar. I mean, she's a sweetheart. She's a definitely a superstar. And she is most definitely a sweetheart. And we also want to talk about braids and how do you shampoo your braids? And I know we talk about this all the time, but people still just don't get it. And they're coming up with some, the reason why I'm going to keep talking about it, because they come up with some crazy stuff that, hmm, I just don't know. And then we want to talk about something that 
kind of relates to folks, but I don't know if it'll have anything to do with folks with dark hair, but can you lighten your hair with vitamin C? Mm. There's some stuff out there on the internet saying that instead of doing lighteners, let's use a vitamin C peel. I want to kind of enlighten you, no pun intended, on that little thing. Can we do that? And how do we take care of our curls or our relaxed hair or our natural hair or whatever hair we have while we're at the beach? You know, we, a lot of us go to the beach and it's pretty cool. We just want to make sure we're able to do that. And who else has shaved their head off? We want to kind of talk about that today. Okay, all right, so where do we start? I think we'll start with our celebrity news because Lupita, okay, and we're going to, I'm going to pronounce it because I, I wanted to go, you know, I'm always wanting to get the correct pronunciation. So let me see how she pronounced her name. Let's see if I can find this because I did look it up. I'm like, wait a minute, I need to know how to pronounce this girl's name because I don't want to pronounce it incorrectly. So let's see what she has to say. Lapita Yongong. It's Lapita Yongong. Okay, so Lapita. So instead of Lapita, it's Lapita. Okay, Lapita, I got you, girl. I got you. So let's pronounce it again. Uh-oh, I've got the sound off of it. In American, Lapita Yongong. Lapita Yongong. Lapita Yongong. There we go. Lapita Young. And that's how she pronounced it. That came from her mouth. So we're going to pronounce it Lapita Young. Now, Lapita Young, she rocks this beautiful, beautiful, stunning. She's stunning. I don't know if you've seen her. She is stunning. She rocks this beautiful fro and it's always short. Now, she is only 34 years old right now. I mean, she was born uh, in 83. She's a theater actress, film actress, television actress. I mean, she's, she's, she's pretty cool. Now, the cool thing about this young lady is that she was born, and she has natural hair. She was born in Mexico, but her family heritage is in Kenya. So, and did you know that she shares the same ethnic identity as Barack Obama, President Barack Obama? Wow. And... So this is pretty cool. I mean, she's very smart. She went to Yale School of Drama. And so she just, you know, she was born in Mexico, Mexico City, matter of fact. But the great thing, the one thing I love about this 34-year-old woman, her net worth is estimated at about $215 million. And she's pretty smart. She's pretty smart. I am very, very proud of her. But now what I want to talk about, I had to give you the other things relating to this young African beauty is Lupita. Um, I said she had this beautiful jewel headband and it wasn't a, it was a serious headband. You know, when you think about headbands, you think about uh, something across the front of the forehead. Uh, right on the hairline. You don't think about headband. She had this headband that swirled over her entire short fro, and she was stunning. Beautiful young lady. And I wanted to mention that because, and let her be our celebrity hair news, because I wanted you guys to know, hey, listen, this is something you could do. This would be great because this jewel went across her entire head, and it was beautiful, beautiful. And so her complete head was covered and it was all the way around the back of the head. She had on this fabulous gown and she had this gorgeous smile, of course. And it was cute. It was a very thin, it looked like it was hair friendly. So I didn't see any combs or teeth in it, but it was really great. And this was stunning when she was at the PBS um really great and I was just really 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 proud of her on the red carpet with her hairstyle as a work of art that's what it really looked like so you guys gotta google her and look at that because it was really beautiful the golden this golden crown that's what it looked like and it was just really fit for a queen and she's our little queen 
we're very proud of her. Okay, that's our celebrity hair news. So again, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, I'm trichologist Lisa Ackberry, your hair doctor. And today we're talking about hair. We're talking about celebrities and we're talking about things like um, how to take care of your hair at the pool or at the beach. I'm going to talk about can you Color your hair with vitamin C pills. Can you actually lighten your hair with vitamin C pills? I think this kind of thing kind of been around a while. And how do we get dandruff in check? Now, are all flakes equal? That's the big question. And what is dandruff? Where did it come from? So we're going to talk about that today as well. And can black people have oily scalp? Hmm, some people seem to think so. And then there's something that I thought was we were over, but you know what? It's moved to another level. We talked about our hair and how we have problems with how people view our hair and individuals, um, whether it's within our race or within other race um, ethnic backgrounds. We're, we're looking at this 16-year-old student with natural hair and you know and that's at an age where you're just really finding yourself and you're i you know trying to decide what you want to look like and what how you want to wear your hair and what you want to eat and what you want to wear and that kind of thing but this 16 year old black student was asked to leave school she was asked to leave school she was asked by the school to get her hair done like okay she had this beautiful and i'm looking at her i'm looking at her beautiful fro and it looks like my hair so if i was at that school uh, was I a teacher or if i was a student will i be asked to leave school that's interesting i thought we were over that and then we're going to talk about how to shampoo your braids okay yeah people think they know and everyone's either you're not shampooing your braids at all or you're sh- you're not you're sh- you're not shampooing them, or you're doing something weird with them. I don't know how people are shampooing, but today I'm going to talk about the correct way. So first, I want to go with this: how to keep dandruff in check, because I think that's really really crucial. Let's talk about dandruff and what it is, and and you will hear all kinds of definitions over the YouTube or internet or whatever, but and cyberspace but dandruff by now i always like to simply put it dandruff by definition is a peeling of the scalp now when it becomes in excess or excessive then it's labeled dandruff but it's a peeling of the epidermis the excessive peeling of your scalp so what happens let me tell you why your scalp even peels because our scalp is the supposed to peel because it peels because it renews itself. So when something interferes with interferes with that renewing process, there's a problem. So here you go. You have your 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 main two layers. You have three, but your main two layers that you deal with is your epidermis. Deal with your your dermis. Your epidermis is like the sentinel. It's like the guard it's the top layers and it's five layers thin if it's on your feet or if palms of your hand but four layers thin if it's on your scalp very very tightly packed to the the dermis the cornea the top layer is the main layer that's holding down the, everything and making your scalp healthy so if that cornea layer that top of the epidermis is not things that happen with it, it will become excessive in its peeling. So you can peel and have like a a dry skin peeling without it being an infection, but you can have, but it's still peeling. So your scalp is creating some form of dandruff and you could say dry scalp. So it's dehydrating because it's in a dry environment or it's in a, um, to that where it's under siege, like damage from chemicals or where the epidermis is being bur- is burned, but you're you're not burning into the dermis. You just on on that top epidermis, and then it'll peel to heal. It'll peel to get fresh, new skin. Because remember, the dermis will push off old skin to the dermis. It 
dies away because it's just dead cells. It dies away, keratin, and it just sits and it guards your precious true skin, the dermis. So when that happens and you damage it, then you start to have problems. So there's so many things that we could be on this as one topic to talk about this. But I want you to understand what dandruff is. It's just an excessive peeling. Sometimes you can have an infectious dandruff or disease where you have damage into your your um, dermis and cause problems. Oh, and then you'll feel all kinds of things because the dead skin cells on the epidermis really don't have a lot of feeling to them. But if you damage beyond the basal layer, which is right above the dermis, then you can hit the dermis area. Your pain receptors are responding. You can bleed, ooze, things like weepy scalp, those kinds of things. That means that you're in the dermis. Well, you can have problems with scalp disease. You can have all kinds of serious problems that will require a visit to your dermatologist. But when you have just a flaky scalp, then it may not be anything that will require medical attention. Now hear me out guys, because we know dermatologists are the skin doctors and they're the doctors that really are going to be able to prescribe things for danger. But now remember I said earlier, not all flakes are equal. So, hmm, let's see. If you're having a flaky scalp, this is what we need to understand as women and men, and especially women of color. Our flaky, and women in general, I'll say women because not just women of color with this, women in general, flakes not are all equal. When I, I'm a trichologist, as you know, and what I do is view the scalp and the hair under the microscope. So when I view a, a scalp under the microscope, I am differentiating these flakes. I want to see what's dead skin cells, which is shedding of the epidermis so that we can get new skin, keep it all nice and healthy. Then we have other flakes. There are three categories of these flakes. We have cosmetic pollutants, that can, which can pollute your scalp, which can look like a flake. Under the microscope, it looks chalky, it almost glows. And so it's different. Scalp flakes are more transparent. So when you have flakes, you want to see a trichologist who uses the reason a trichologist is not a dermatologist initially is because a trichologist is generally going to use a handheld microscope and they're going to take a look and see what those flakes are and then they can help disperse dis excuse me they can help make some recommendations and they can help you to know which doctor or practitioner or your stylist or or home treatments that you can do. So this third one would be environmental pollutants. Environmental pollutants is just dust, dirt, and debris. When all of that gets mixed in around your scalp, it creates these flaky, this flaky sus substance. So when you look at it with your naked eye, it looks like dandruff. But not all flakes are equal. Remember that. So if you have a flake, you have to make sure this is how you keep them in check. You have your levels of, of, of reactions or action. Number one, you need to start creating a certain environment on your scalp, a clean, acidic, stimulated, hydrated. One, because when you have a flake, your skin is responding either to what's touched it on contact, dry scalp flake, or it's a disease flake, like from a, an infectious dandruff, or it's a problem with a product that was not clean, so it flaked up on your scalp, or you're no pooing and co-washing and you're getting these buildups of cosmetics, or it's environmental. Some people work a lot outside or in their homes, it's all dusty. All of that gets on your scalp and it will solidify and create a flake that's really unique and that can be rid, you can get rid of it. So if you get a clean environment, so you're shampooing it twice a week inside of, of that week, twice a week, and then you're pre-pooing, you put in your shampoo and applicator bottle 
getting the applicator bottle towards your scalp, massaging it in, letting your scalp sit on a hot dryer for a few minutes so you can sweat. At that point, you want to because it helps to open up the pores and dump your waste and salt. Use shampoo one additional time. Focus it on your scalp. Warm water, warm as you can stand it. Don't burn your scalp. And then you're ready to start doing a couple of things now. If then before it's drying, before your hair, you you do whatever you're gonna do to dry your hair. You put a oil and you need something that's really light. I have something like oil skin in a jar. You can use our level two scalp treatment. That's great. Or you can use a hova oil. There's other oils that you can use. And we have oils in our, um, in our system that will help you with this problem. And then you let it dry and you repeat that for a couple of weeks. If the problem is persistent, at that point, you need to see a trichologist. So the trichologist can determine whether you need to see a dermatologist or you can have some natural treatments within that trichologist clinic. That's it on dandruff because we're not going to do the whole show on it. Email me, Lisa at Lisa com if you have additional questions about dandruff. And I also, I will put a link here. I'm going to kind of multitask here. I'm going to put a link here on uh, dandruff and how to actually I'm gonna close, out, close out some of these windows because I'm getting pretty, pretty, pretty full up here. Uh, but that's our, that's our my take on dandruff. I'm going to put a link on one of my programs that I have for flaky scalp. And that will help. So you can try that because that gives you a lot of guidance. Because if you're going to do try at home, remember you're going to try at home for several days or a couple of weeks or so. And then if the problem is persistent, then you're ready to go to see a, um, a trichologist who will at that point determine if you need natural treatments or you need to visit a dermatologist. Because you definitely want to stay with this because dandruff or flaky scalp left untreated will eventually cause a problem with um, with alopecia, certain forms of alopecia. So you really got to be careful with that. You, you just got to take care of it. You can't leave it that way. So I have different programs. If you have natural hair, I have programs for that. If you have relaxed hair, but I'm going to just give my general program. I'm trying to if I can multitask, you guys know I'm not that great at multitasking when it comes to trying to type in something and talk to as well. So I just can't. So I'm going to get my program for flakes. And then that way you can determine whether or not you need that. And again, if the problem is persistent, then you want to look at seeing your dermatologist. Um, you want to see your um, you always, actually you want to see your trichologist. And at that point, your trichologist will determine whether or not you need to see um, your dermatologist. Yes. So I, that's my take on it. So, okay. So we've got some folks that are, yeah, she's been wondering. So I'm going to give you, I've got someone that says that um, I'm so glad I caught this. I've been wondering about dandruff. My 17 month old frequently has a thin layer of dry scalp oil only on his crown. Yeah, see, seven, 17 month old. And you want to be careful, but I'm going to tell you right away. I have patients who babies use our um, scalp treatments and programs, and they do extremely well. So I'm going to, um, absolutely, I'm going to highly recommend this uh, treatment for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a program for flakes, but just remember it is not no more tears. Uh, so it you don't want to get it in the eyes, but it is great for uh, that baby's scalp. You will love it and you will love everything about the treatment plan. So I'm going to send you that link here and that way you can and it and you request different um, things from me. Like like you can order, let's get, let's get the link up there. You could also order um, consultation for me. I'm going to send both up there. There we go. All right, every consultation, and then I'll be able to help you with that as well. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, or you are tuning in as a repeat 
listening to me on the radio or if you are on my YouTube page. I'm trichologist Lisa Eckberry. You're here, doctor. And today we're here talking about so many things. We just start take talk. We just completed our conversation about dandruff, but I want to talk about this next one. Um, I want to talk about oily scalp because this is one of the things I wanted to talk about today. Can black folk I mean, we, we have all kinds of viewers out here, but can black folk have oily scalp? Is it possible for us to have an oily scalp? I mean, we always hear you have dry hair, you're black, you have old, dry scalp. Well, can we have oily scalp? Now, let me tell you, I've been in this industry for many, many, many years. I've conducted studies on all types of hair, dry hair, oily hair, straight hair, kinky hair, um hair with from all backgrounds i tell all of everyone i meet i treat patients that are from african kinky to asian street and everything in between so if it's a a hair type that's extremely kinky or if it's a hair type that's of a wave pattern or if it's a hair type that's of a straight pattern i've treated i've treated oily scalp and dry scalp this is what I found out. Most black folks, most people, and we've got a mixture, you gotta keep in mind, most black people have something if you with especially African Americans, you have some other race within your in your family line. And so you may have a combination of things going on with your scalp. You can have some oily areas, but how do we get oily scalp? Let's talk about where that oil comes. We have something called a sebaceous gland, which is our oil glands that are attached right as the mouth of the follicle. We have an attachment of that gland going right up there as it the hair starts to emerge. So it lubricates that hair shaft with oil. So we all really could have the amount of oil we need. But what I found is the reason why many black people, and this is just looking at not just from me, because I don't oil my scalp, I don't have to. But I found the reason why many people who have dry scalp, and I found it in black folk, white folk, I found that it's because of the condition of the scalp. When the scalp is healthier, when you have a clean, acidic, stimulated, hydrated environment, as you're shampooing on a regular basis, you're, con you're um, not overheating your scalp under dryers. You're not scratching. You're not burning with chemicals or sunburn. You're not doing all these things that cause the skin to dehydrate using high pH shampoos. Then our scalp tends to be pretty normal. Now, there are exceptions. So guys, don't email me and say, look, I had a problem. I did all the great things, blah, blah, blah. Don't email me and say that. Listen, I understand. But I'm just saying, based on the thousands and thousands of people that I have examined over the years as a trichologist, I have found, and I've done, I've done studies. I did a study called Scalp is Skin because scalp is skin because we had so many people wondering well hey my scalp is different from skin of my body and and that could be true but here's the deal we have we can have oily scalp if we have what i found mostly with people is when we have the a uh, build up and we do not allow our oils to be free to do what its job. Generally, we have, and there could be conditions, and again, guys, I have to stress this, there could be conditions that will say, no, you have a scalp issue, but I think it's gonna be rare, comparatively speaking. So two things I found, overwhelming. Two, one, women have a buildup of pollutants. These pollutants are solidifying, causing a waxy substance to be on their scalp. That waxy substance, they are pre-pooing, no pooing, shampooing with hydrating shampoos. They're not really cleaning their scalp. 
So they have this waxy substance. So they think they have oily scalp. The other piece is we are, some cases rare, our sebaceous glands are overactive and we are getting this oily scalp. Now, why is our hair still dry? Because our hair, especially with women of color, is very spiral. It's not as that hair goes out of the follicle, our own entire follicle is curved at an angle. And so our hair goes out and it spirals out away from our scalp. And so what happens, our scalp will uh, not be able to lubricate the entire shaft. So it stays right at the scalp. So our hair, you have to to supplement with our hair. I don't put oils on my scalp, but I do hydrate my hair. Oils help to seal in hydrate. So we can have an oil, but in most cases that I've treated, what I find is that most of these patients have oily scalp because of the buildup that has solidified along their scalp, creating this waxy, substance and so they scratch it up and they see this greasy stuff and they think it's oil but when we look at this substance under the microscope it is just cosmetic now that's what i'm seeing in most of the cases i want to say 90 percent and i say i'll put a plus on the end of that 90 plus percent so can black folk have scalp can people with dry hair have scalp oily scalp excuse me yes they can, but it's not common. Just want to say that, just saying. If you're just tuning in for the very, very first time today, I'm having a great show. I'm excited about my show. I'm trichologist Lisa Ackberry. You're here, doctor. And today we are talking about so many things. We did our celebrity hair for Lupita, talking about her and her hair art. We talked about dandruff and how to keep them in check. So make sure you, if you're just tuning in, make sure you go back and take a look at my YouTube page and rewind. <laughs> It'll be archived, of course. And if you're on the radio, go to my YouTube page and share it with your friends. I'm going to put it on my Facebook page. And I'm also going to put it on, I'm going to a link on Twitter. And I'm going to put a link on um, some of my other, I have several Facebook pages, so I'm going to put it on all of them. Okay. We also talked about oily scalp. Can black folk have oily scalp? Yes, yes, we can. So I talked about that today as well. So we want to get to some of our other topics today. Uh, we had someone to ask me, because, you know, it's that time of year, ask me about taking care of their curls or their hair while they are on the beach. You know, it's finally summer. It's it, Well, it's, it's not quite spring still. And I know I'm dating this bit by saying that because you're probably viewing this video and it's summer has long passed. But how do we prepare our hair for things that we do in the summer? How do we prepare our hair for things we do in the spring? Or even if we're year round trying to win in an area where you can year round enjoy warm weather. How do we prepare it? What are one of the main things we do? We go swimming. How do we prepare for going swimming? And what do we do to, to prepare our hair? How do we prepare our hair when we're outside in the sun? Is it going to cause a problem with our hair? So that's one of the things I want to talk about today. You really do have to be careful. Now, here's the deal with swimming. Now, you may be swimming in a pool that has chlorine, or you may be swimming in a salt pool. Well, in the case you really... You know, some people love to dive and, and love to do those those cannonballs and whatever they call them when they jump in the pool. Well, it doesn't matter whichever one you use because both will dry your hair out. If you have chlorine in the pool, you can dehydrate. If you have salt in the pool, you can dehydrate or, or yeah, in the pool. Or if you're in the ocean or or a lake, you get he got just pollutants as well. Most people don't really think about those things. We have to look at that. So if you are gonna swim and you're gonna be on the beach and you're gonna do all those wonderful, exciting things, then you need to be careful with your hair. Now, some people want to put a swim cap on. Now that is an option, but think about a swim cap. Swim cap does not decide determine 
um, it doesn't protect your hair fully. Let me just say that. It's not going to keep all the water out. So you notice how sometimes you take it off and you have this little wet around the hairline. And then even with the Olympic type professional swim caps, you still get a little bit of wetness. But then you sometimes sweat under there. So it could be problematic regardless. So you still want to, to take care of your scalp. So here's the deal. Before you swim, make sure you rinse your hair. Do one shampoo application with a clarifier. Don't try to put something on your hair to protect your hair. A, it's bad for the pool. B, it's bad in pool or environment. And, and then it's also not good for your hair because then the chlorine gets mixed in hair products and it's a mess. It's harder to remove. So you want clean hair. So if you're going to get in the pool, you want clean clean here. Then once you you need weights like with sweat you can you wait 48 hours and you're still okay to shampoo but you need to shampoo within say I'll give you your break and say seven I'm gonna be out there getting around and doing whatever. At some point before that day ends you need to shampoo your hair you take your clarifier and you want a clarifier that has a pH of 4.5 to 5.5 and you put that on your hair first. You put that clarifier over your strands and then after you put that clarifier on, then you are ready to put put a plastic cap on, let it sit for a few minutes and then you get in the shower and you rinse, rinse, rinse. If you're swimming every day, you're rinsing, you put one application of shampoo on again, and you run it through, put your condition on for 60 seconds, run it through, and then you're ready to get out of there. Wrap your hair with a towel to remove the excess water. Get good leave-in conditioners like hair vitamins. I have one on my website uh, called Hair Vitamins. You can email me and I can send you a program for uh, swimming. So that will help you out a lot. Uh, if you like, you can email me lisa at lisaackberry.com and I will send you a link so that we can get you a program for swimming. But if other than that, you can use order my clarifying shampoo, order my leave-in hair vitamins, my deep conditioner, but you only have to do it for 60 seconds, the quick fix. I can give you those quick fix steps. So there's lots of ways that you can take care of your hair, but then you wanna hydrate it and you can pull it back and put it in a little plait or put it in, a, do a shampoo and go, or if you're wearing straight hair, you can just pull it back in a scrunchie and then allow it to dry and then take the scrunchie off and let it hang. There's so many things you can do that's the quick fix, but you gotta get the chlorine out because that's the key and you have to use a clarifier because what a clarifier will quickly do with one application, it'll pick up everything that's foreign. See, clarifying by definition means to put the hair at a pure natural state or to put at a pure natural state. And that's what you want with you. But you gotta stay with the pH between 4.5 to 5.5, which is the pH of your hair. And scalp. So now you have the 411 on shampooing your hair and enjoying your swimming. And just running around on the beach and you're in the sun, you want to make sure that you hydrate your hair. Overheat and it's going out of your hair. And if you have a bald scalp, put some scalp because you want to make sure that you're not burning. All right? Use the moisturizers on the hair. Because it's overheated and liquefied, and it's just not going to be good. But it will keep your moisture levels up. So when you dry, it, you won't dry out but until you can get in and get a shower. Yay, now you have the 411. Hi, if you just... This technology is Lisa Your You're here, doctor. And today we're talking about hair. Do all these wonderful things to your hair. We've talked about getting you that 411. Take care of your hair in, while in the summer, pool or the beach. And, and now, and then we gave 
information. Wonderful hair garments, her hair crown. It was simply beautiful. And then we talked about uh, can black folk have oily scalp? <laughs> we talked about that as well. And can, what is the oily scalp? Where does it come from? And then dandruff, how to keep dandruff in check. We've done that today. So the action pack show. I'm going to pull in as much stuff as I can because I want you guys to be aware because that's why you tune in. And I feel really good about today's show because, you know, guys, I can really, really say that I'm having a great time today because I want to try to get in as many things as possible that way you have some things if it, this doesn't fit you that fits you if you're not having an issue with that just like uh, the uh, um the individual my cyber family member she chatted and said hey this was great she has a seven month old baby and she wanted to know about flakes so that helped her we talked about flakes so we've talked about a lot today so we're going to go continue now one of the things that i told you i was going to talk about is how to lighten your hair with vitamin c pills and can you lighten your hair with vitamin c pills hmm well you can because you've got a little bit of natural dye in there that's going to give you a color. Now, here's the thing. If you have dark hair, you're not going to do very much with lightening your hair with the vitamin C peels because the vitamin C peels are just not going to give you any more than a deposit. And basically, they're just kind of depositing, staining, really, that cuticle layer. So, yes, you can get your hair lighter with those vitamin C peels. Yes, you can, because it's going to take on the color. It's kind of like um, what we found with uh, Kool-Aid. It's the same thing. You know, some people are looking to, you know, you got the blue hair and the pink hair and you got all these different colors and the reds and, but the, the, the I call them fun colors. And so you're basically mixing it in your shampoo or you're mixing it in water and you're putting it on the hair and letting it sit. And you just continue to do that. It'll fade back off, but you got to be careful. Depending on how porous your hair is, you might have to end up coloring it. It's, it's pretty much vegetable based. So you've got some, um, it's going to be gentle. So you got some benefits there, but it's a stain guys. And it's just like, you know, how you get grape juice on something or, or blueberry stain or ooh, sometimes it's horrible to get out and you don't know what you may have to go through to get that out. So you have to be careful because if it takes over that cuticle, it becomes the color of the cuticle and that it will just cover it completely. So just remember, yes, you can use Kool-Aid. You can use vitamin C peels, but it's only for hair that's light. If your hair is dark because it's only depositing into the actual cuticle, it's putting some artificial pigment in there. And that's just going to give you a little bit of lightness to that hair. It's going to be where you will yeah, have that lightness, but it's not going to be anything that's going to put in dark pigments because if it's a light pigment that's going in a dark pigment, dark pigment is going to overpower it. So it's not going to lift. It's just a deposit. So it's not going to lift your color. It's just going to deposit into your existing color. So your hair almost has to be blonde or a very light brown or something like that. So you can't really get it. It's just for folks with that lighter hair. Wink, wink. Hi guys, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm trichologist Lisa Ackberry. If you're tuning in and hey, you are a repeat listener and a repeat viewer, thank you, thank you so much. I love my cyber family. Thank you guys for tuning in today. And we are here live in the WDA studio. I'm trichologist Lisa Ackberry, your hair doctor, and we're about to wind it up, but I am loving this show. We are action packed, and I was determined to get a whole bunch of stuff in. We've got a couple of more topics I want to talk about in our final minutes. I want to talk about shampoo and braids because that's been a really, really big deal for a lot of folks. And we're going to end the show with talking about this 16 year old who was sent home from school or was asked from the school to change her hair, do her hair, style her hair. But we'll get to that in a minute. Now, how do we shampoo braids? You know, braids, that's a big deal because braids 
are great. They've kind of got a bad rap. Braids is a low maintenance. It's not a zero maintenance style. So yeah, you got to shampoo, guys. You got to shampoo your braids. Now, I've heard all kinds of things, putting on stocking cap on it, doing, just putting uh, sea breeze on it. No, 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 no. None of that's true. You've got to use shampoo. Now, this is what you do. You get an applicator bottle. You put your shampoo in. You don't have to mix your shampoo up with anything because you're just trying to lift the weight. So you know what I'm going to say. Use your clarifier. You get an applicator bottle with a little pointed tip, like the little Yorker tip. You get that uh and you do a pre-poo. You put the shampoo around the base of the braid. Try to get that little tip right underneath and do a little scope through your parts. And then everywhere you know your hair is, you want to go down that braid and you want to kind of focus on that and squeeze in to that hair. And then once you do that, then you want to give it a few seconds to let it sit. And then you want to rinse, rinse. You want to start in warm water and you want to turn it up to it as warm as you can stand it. Then you want to take your conditioner and you want to put that on. So squeezing it into the hair area of the braid, especially if you have extensions, where you know your hair is. And then you do it. Be careful about these YouTube videos. Some of them are telling you to put stocking caps on your head. All it's going to do is trap some of that debris and it's going to settle back down in your hair. Now, let me tell you, shampooing your braids is crucial because when you shampoo your braids, your hair, that especially if you have added hair in the braids extensions, then the hair is going to stay fit and in place the extended hair. But your natural hair is not going to, if you're not careful, you have to shampoo and then you have to condition. Then you put a towel around your head to get the excess water. Then you have to use your leave-in conditioners. I have a braid program. Um, and you can e email me Lisa at Lisa And I'm going to put a link. And that braid program will offer you an opportunity to um, shampoo your braids without ruining them because the whole thing is you want them to look neat as long as possible, but you also want them to be cared for pro properly. So I'm going to put a link to my online store, and I want you guys to go to my get my braid program and there's tons of programs there so i'm going to put a link here and that way you have the link to my online store and you can go and you will be able to shop for braid programs and any other programs that i have but i'm going to um give you that great opportunity so now once you put your, all your leave-in products on, then you're going to, um, from there, you're going to tie the hair down and sit under a cool dryer. And then you're going to turn the dryer up to warm. Okay, you're going to sleep overnight. Now, what you want, what's going to happen when you take that scarf off? You're going to have your hair all intact again because those leave-in products, if you use a leave-in hair vitamin, a leave-in moisturizer and a leave-in uh, oil is going to seal your hairstyle back in place. Okay, alrighty. So now you have the 411 on how to clean your braids. Okay, very good. All right, all right. So the last we said we're going to end the show with this. We want to talk about this kid, this 16-year-old, this baby that was told that she, she was a 16 year old black student with natural hair, asked by the school to get her hair done, quote unquote. And if you could go online, it said, I think Essence did this article. If you go online, you can find it. And this was like, and this was a May article. I think it was Crystal Tate was the, um, um, the, um, editor <laughs> that wrote this article and it was in florida florida high school um it's crazy they're responsible for this latest attack on the black on black air i mean you know i don't know it's crazy it's, it's it's just crazy and 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 you wouldn't think that this would be a situation but it is a situation now so she was asked by the school and they told her um let's see this is a 
I think, wait a minute, this might have been in Boston area school. So this black student was denounced for her hair. The 16 year old, and uh, her name was Nicole, she was a junior at this, well, no, she was in Florida and was told that her natural hair was against dress code policy. Oh my. So when people say they love my hair, and she said people tell her that all the time. They said because it's so diverse, curly, Afrocentric. Apparently school administrations didn't think so. They thought she was at a private preparatory school in the metro Orlando, Orlando area, and they just didn't agree. And they told her that she needed to um, she needs to change her hair. You know, I just wonder, how do they think that made that child feel? I mean, she's at an age where she's vulnerable. I mean, I, I pray that she got support. Um, I don't know. She was saying, this is my understanding in talking with the Dean of Students. I think it was, was more in line with the neat and organized look that they were going for. So I guess I wouldn't do well because maybe they may not think my hair is neat and organized. I don't know, let's be clear. I don't know, Nicole does not have locks, which further highlights an ignorance, you know, of school administrators who develop student policies and implement dress codes or rules for people with natural hair and trying to ban natural hair. They were just talking about her hair. I mean, I could see that. Locks is, is bad enough when they talk about locks because locks are a great expression as well. It's just another way of saying that natural black hair is unkept. This is it, you know? Well, it's just something we have to deal with right now. So I want you guys, if you're in that area, please, please go online and, and let, encourage her and let her know that she's great, that she's beautiful, that God made her here. And like I say in my book, God makes no mistakes. And I may have to try to send her my book and just let her know. Because I'm looking at her little face on there and she looks really kind of down about it. But that's okay. She's going to be just fine. Well, guys, this is the show. I, we're ending it with that one. We're just going to pray for Nicole and pray for her and her hair. And, 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 you know, just, just, I thought we were over this, but you know, we're going to the children now, which makes it really, really bad. Don't like it a bit. Don't like it. I'm just going to tell you that. So I'm just going to do a, is emoji gritting my teeth on that one. How about that one? <laughs> but I've got to do a kiss goodbye because I am trichologist Lisa Eckbeer, and I think I have run out of time. If you've just tuned in to the show, I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for coming in today. But if you want to hear my show again, please, please, please go to my YouTube page. If you've tuned in on the radio and you want to see me fluff my hair, as I do always in the beginning of the show, because I always want to know us to know how flexible and how versatile and how wonderful and how much body our hair has and how beautiful it is. Wow. So just do that, YouTube. And please subscribe to my page. Please follow me on Twitter. Like me on Facebook because I am here offering a service to you because I want to share. I want to share everything that God has given me to share with you as it relates to your hair and scalp. So I've enjoyed today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Whether you're tuning in to an archive uh, presentation of my show, or you're live here on the radio, or you're live here on my YouTube page, I want to say thank you. To God be the glory in Jesus. It's a beautiful day, and I thank you for tuning in. You have a wonderful, blessed morning, evening, or afternoon depends on when you're tuning in. And I will see you next week with more. I'm here each and every every week right here live in the WDA studios and iHeartRadio. I will see you next week right here. Love you. To God be the glory. Have a blessed, wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon. 
Okay, guys, we are outie. Let me find my screen because it's so full. <laughs> and that way we can get on with our day. Here we are. <laughs> 